So yesterday, Devondra Campbell went on to X and went into a long description in, in many different tweets about a lot of different things regarding this Packers defense last season, what he thinks the reason was for lots of the problems, lots of the issues. And he gets very open, very honest. I'm surprised he shared this much on social media. But I want to go through and read through all of these tweets that he shared. He, of course, was recently released by the Packers and signed by the San Francisco 49ers to a one-year deal. And so let's just get into it. And as always, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. So first off here, for some reason, I can't see this person's post, but he responds, trust me, I know they don't watch the film and half the time they don't know what's going on. But one thing I'm not going to let happen is bad information being put out about me. All year I was out there trying to make people right because they were busting coverages and run fits. So his whole reason for doing all this is because he doesn't want bad information or I guess false kind of information out there. And so he's trying to clarify what he believes was actually going on. And then next, Andy Gilbert says, the more you talk, the more it seems like it was the DC defensive coordinator in confusion more than anything. He says, listen, man, there's so much I could say, but for the longest, I just kept it to myself and kept taking the blame. I don't work for the organization anymore. So anytime I see some false information, I'm going to correct it and tell the truth. If you don't want to hear the truth, sorry. So I guess he felt the freedom to really expose what he believes was going on because he's no longer on the Packers. Because of that, he's coming out and sharing his thoughts. And we did see, you know, back in December, he did come out and share that. I'll read the tweet from December while he was on the Packers. Not going out of my, not going out my way anymore. And I'm not playing through injuries anymore because when bleep goes wrong, they always use it against you. I'm treating everyone accordingly and giving them the same energy they've given me. Focus on yourself and your mental 59. You owe it to yourself. So he said he was playing through injuries back then. Then Adrian Amos just responded with some eye emojis, that kind of like nervous laughy emoji, whatever you call that. And then Devondra Campbell said, they mad at me for telling the truth, bro. Laughing emoji. I guess they like liars. I just can't do it won't be out here lying on my name. Then Thundercats12 says, Come on, dude, we loved you here and that you were part of the team, but why trash the Packers after you made $23 million in All-Pro? He says, Why y'all why keep saying I trash the Packers? I never once said anything negative about the organization. Best organization I've ever been a part of at this point, but it's some coaches I lost all respect for. So he's claiming that he's not going after the organization but seemingly the coaches, or some of the coaches. Then Robin Adams says, what changed from 2021 to 2022, or what changed from 2021 to the 2022 to 2023? Because the schemes sure felt worse every year, and we all know the coach in charge wasn't making any changes. Campbell says, listen, if I would have listened to half the stuff they were telling me, I would have never went all pro. All year, all I heard was, can you do this? It'll help the scheme. I kept saying no all year, and look what happened. First team All-Pro. So basically, he's saying that his 2021 season was so good, he went All-Pro because he was not doing what the coaches told him. He was basically going on his own and doing what he felt was right, and that's why he's claiming he, he did that well his first season. Then he says, Fast forward to 2022-2023 season, I tried to be a team guy and play within the system and do what they asked. Be more visual. There they're saying, quote, Be more visual on QB and not look up routes. Back, back up from line of scrimmage so I'm not pressing every wide receiver tied in. Look at what happened. They had me, Quay, out there looking clueless, shaking my head. So he's basically claiming they were put in the wrong position, whereas in 2021, he didn't listen. I guess 2022 and 2023, he started to listen. And because of that, he's saying that things went south. And then here we have Packers Weekly Podcast says, instead of assuming, you know, what the player means by misused, Maybe ask the player for clarification in, about what misused means. It's wild how many of you agree that the coach's scheme was not good, termination worthy, and at the same time, blame a player for saying he was. Then Campbell says, all they had to do was ask, and I would have been more than happy to clarify, but instead they do what's easiest, attack me and call me bitter, when that's the furthest thing from the truth. So I think that the, the reason I'm more shocked about this is that he's actually saying these things, because I mean, most NFL players... Well, some do, but most don't go out there and share their true opinions, even if they have them. And so, um, you know, lots of us over, over the time, 
were frustrated at times with the scheme. Campbell seems to have been pretty frustrated himself with the scheme, and now he's letting us know. Then um, someone apparent, or it says here that Campbell liked this tweet. Someone tweets, they tweeted, I bet you now understand why Rodgers always try to defend players. Green Bay is the worst team on how they treat the players on their way out. Wish you the best of luck. Here's to hoping someday Green Bay treats the players right. It's business until it's not. So Campbell liked that tweet. Someone says, Kyle says, please explain slash provide more context to you liking this then. He says, the organization didn't even call me to ask if I wanted to take a pay cut. They just released me after going to them in the media and saying me and Aaron Jones were part of the future plans. They could have just told me the truth. I could easily be bitter, but I'm not. So, it, it you know, we did hear from Rodgers years ago that that was something he was upset with from the organizational standpoint of the way they treated players on the way out. And I think that what we're seeing is that the front office, Brian Gutekunst, they treat it like a business and they make these tough decisions. And Campbell's even saying he doesn't really care that they made the decision necessarily, but that they made it seem, or he thinks they made it seem one way and then ended up, you know, cutting him. Then Chris says this, my question for you and Quay, since I'm not in the meeting room, is why were you two so delayed getting downhill when we were single gapping in a middle of field closed structure? Was that schematic at the defensive system level, or was that something that the was that something the linebacker coach asked of you guys? He says, because we ran a split safety system, meaning we use our safeties a lot in the run fit. So if I shoot my gap before the safety triggers. We can get gashed. So most of the time, me and Quay are just trying to buy time for our safeties to get there. We don't have middle of fields closed structure. So basically, if they were to, I guess, against the run, just move as quickly as possible there, they could get beat because the the safeties had to, to come down. And so that's why they were maybe hesitant, um, which is interesting. Then Justin MKE says that Joe Barry defense played a lot better down the stretch and is the same coach that made a DC and all pro Campbell says, you want to know why we played better? Because I started going and having private meetings with Matt telling him we needed to be more aggressive. We needed more man and we needed to blitz more. And what happened when they listened to me, we played well in one. It's no co- coincidence. So he's saying because he went to Matt LaFleur and told him what should happen. Apparently the Packers seemed to listen at that time. And then things started going well um, for the Packers. He's saying, then Amanda Gopat Go Phillips says, if we learned one thing, it's that Campbell is going to tell it how it is and speak the truth. We as fans don't know what's going on behind the scenes, so we need to stop assuming that everything is as, as it seems. If the players don't stand up for themselves, who will? Campbell says, all I know is the truth. I tried my best to help the organization win, but it's hard to win when you aren't willing to evolve. When my coaches aren't willing to listen to the feedback that can make us better as a team, there isn't much I can do. All I can say is that I tried my best. So it sounds like for... A long time of Campbell's time in Green Bay, he didn't agree with what was going on. And from that comment that uh, when he says, when my coaches aren't willing to listen to feedback, seemingly they weren't listening to him. But I guess they did after a while when he went to Matt LaFleur and said we need to switch things up from his previous tweet. Then we're almost to the end of this, but Teddy Westside says this, don't care who you mad at, I love you, man. You're my kid's favorite player no matter where you play. Nothing but love and hopefully peace for you and your family. Be great. He says, I'm not mad at anyone. I just wanted to clarify some false information. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support from you and your family. It doesn't go unnoticed. I pray you guys have a blessed Sunday. Um, he then says, the truth sounds insane to someone that isn't used to hearing it. And then someone else says, just know the majority of fans are on your side and wishing you the best moving forward. He says, I love all the fans that love me. The three years I spent in Green Bay were definitely special. And I appreciate all the support you guys have given me over the last three years. Hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. And then... Mark Yarbro says, didn't you sign like two weeks before camp? LOL. He says, basically, LOL. I signed with one day left in my mandatory mini camp, got the playbook, learned as much as I could during the summer, came back and balled. LOL. I didn't even know half the system. I was just playing the way I know how to play. So it seems to me like Campbell's saying that when he wasn't, you know, sort of just doing what he felt was best, things went better for the Packers or better for him at least, um, when he wasn't following what the coaches wanted him to do, it seems. Then Joshua says, Man, you don't have to explain yourself to Twitter trolls. As a Packers fan, we know we have the personnel to have the best defense, but that's only one part of the equation. Even someone like me could see the play calling was absolutely garbage. Set you guys up to fail. He says, I wasn't trying to explain myself, just clarifying a few things. That's all. I wish my brothers over there 
and the organization the best of luck. And here we have BG Shot 72 says, that sucks because you and Quay are great athletes. And here I was worried that Quay was all athlete, but nothing upstairs. Sorry for doubting Quay. What about that run defense? Might as well lay it all out there. He says, Quay is going to be just fine. They just had him thinking too much. He's a good dog. You don't make dogs think. You just let them play. He's a great player. I think this new system will fit him perfectly. So that's that's promising. And then Miller here says, Am I, and not a single one of those people have an impact on his job, yet he feels a need to entertain their opinions. He says, it's not about entertaining opinions. You guys spend your hard-earned money to come watch us play. The least I can do is tell you the truth about what happened. But if you don't like it, you're more than willing to block me so you don't see it. And so that's basically his whole thought process. And I think now when we look at the Packers and the time with Joe Barry and the fact that Matt LaFleur decided to let go of Joe Barry, bring in Halfley, who is supposedly really good at explaining things to players and allowing them to play loose, play free. And it sounds to me, Campbell was saying when he was playing free and not basically hesitating and doing what the scheme taught, that things went better. And so he's saying that in this new scheme with Quay, things should go better for them. And it seems to be a more aggressive style defense than what Joe Barry was used to playing. Campbell doesn't seem to have liked that Joe Barry defense. And I guess I'm just shocked to hear that he went into so much detail and he just said he wants to clarify. So he's not being, um, I guess what he thinks is, is lied about and, and how things have been going down with him and the Packers for the past year or so. It seems like at least him can't speak for other players, but at least for him, he did not think the scheme was putting them in the best position to succeed. So it is very interesting. Wanted to share all of those tweets. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe. Turn on the post notifications so you never miss any content. And I'll see you guys next time.